All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in again. We are continuing on with the reading of Dr. Miles Monroe's book, In the Pursuit of Purpose. In Pursuit of Purpose, the Key to Personal Fulfillment. I do apologize for the delay in getting out Chapter 3. Um, for those of you who are not aware, I do live in Louisiana, which is in like the Gulf Coast area. And most recently, around this time, August of 2016, the time of this recording, we have been inundated with floods, um, flood waters, rain, lots of rain. And so it's been a little difficult trying to get the recordings out in a more timely fashion. I do apologize for that. Um, I hope you will understand. But I am excited to continue on with the reading, and I hope you will be as engaged as I am right now. Um, I'm just so grateful to be able to sit down and pick up a book in spite of all that's going on around me that um, our God, our King has given me a, a peace of mind and a peace that passes all understanding and that I can do something so simple yet so rewarding for me at this time, Lord, when I when I know that there are people around me that are not as fortunate, and right now I just, Lord, I thank you. I thank you right now. Um, like I said, for a simple pleasure, something so simple to me, but profound. And I always, always, always stand in awe of your greatness. And so without further ado, let's continue on with the reading. I'm on chapter three, the principles of purpose. Keep your head and your heart going in the right direction and you will not have to worry about your feet. Have you ever watched the ocean? The constant ebb and flow of the waves reveal the order with which God created the world. With care and precision, he established basic laws and principles that would fulfill his plans and purposes for all creation. A principle, by definition, is an accepted or professed rule of action or conduct, a fundamental primary or general law or truth from which others are derived, or a fundamental doctrine. Thus, principles are fundamental truth with universal application. They govern and reveal the normal operation or behavior of something. Principles are like lighthouses. They are laws that cannot be broken. We can only break ourselves against them. Just as the law or principle of universal gravitation both governs and exhibits the attraction between the earth and the moon and the law or principle of centrifugal force controls and reveals the behavior of the earth's revolution around the sun so the principles of purpose both rule and make known the function of purpose there are seven basic principles that characterize purpose as god designed it principle number one god is a god of purpose every creator or manufacturer begins with purpose the person first establishes the intent before beginning the process of production. God is the source of purpose. Nature is filled with evidence that he determines the purpose for a thing before he creates it. In other words, God never made anything for the fun of it. He never created something just to see if he could make it. Before the creative act ever takes place, God has in his mind the why and the how of what he decides to make. He does everything with and for a purpose. Long before God became the creator, he was planning and designing the many things we would speak into existence. Things that he would speak into existence. The intentional nature of God is also seen throughout his interaction with humankind. He purposed to save Noah from the flood that would destroy the earth before he told Noah to build a boat. Genesis 6, 9 through 22. He established that Esau, the elder son of Isaac, 
would serve Jacob, the younger son, before Rebekah had given birth to them. Genesis 25:19-26. He ordained that King David's son Solomon would build the Lord a temple long before Solomon was born in 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 16, and in 1 Chronicles 22, 6 through 10. He determined that a virgin would have a child before the Holy Spirit came over Mary in Isaiah 7, 14 and Matthew 1, 18, 20 through 21. And he appointed Paul to be his messenger to the Gentiles before he sent Ananias to pray for Paul so he could receive his sight again, Acts 9 and 15. These and many other examples that have not been cited reveal God's character of acting with purpose. He is a God of purpose. He never acts without first setting the end toward which his actions are directed. God never creates before he purposes. It was his purpose that generated all he created and forever established the intent for everything that exists. Principle number two. Everything in life has a purpose. Because God is a God of purpose and he created everything, then everything in life has a purpose. This amazes me. When I look at a roach before I kill it or a rat caught in a trap, I wonder that God has a plan and a purpose for each of these creatures. The lice we detest and the snakes we fear were made by God to fulfill a specific purpose as were mosquitoes, birds, and trees. God took as much time putting together spiders and ants as he did creating butterflies and flowers. Just because we don't understand a creature's purpose doesn't mean that it is purposeless. Our reactions of fear or disgust do not negate their reasons for existence because everything serves a purpose. In essence, ignorance of purpose does not cancel purpose. Consequently, everything, no matter how insignificant it may seem, exists for a distinct purpose in the mind of God to serve a greater purpose. The hairs in your nostrils were carefully designed by God and intentionally placed there for the purpose of trapping bacteria germs, and dust particles, preventing them from contaminating the lungs during inspiration. The wax in your ears has a purpose. Your ear glands were created to produce wax, to attract and trap dust particles, bacteria, and germs before they can enter the delicate inner ear and cause infection. There's nothing in your body that does not serve a vital purpose, even down to the smallest detail. This is also true of nature. Humankind has recently discovered that every animal and every plant was created to balance the ecosystem. Any disruption in its purpose affects everything else. The ozone layer of the upper atmosphere has been discovered to have a critical purpose to perform. It was designed to help preserve life on our planet by regulating the intensity of the ultraviolet rays from the sun. The plants themselves absorb the ultraviolet rays of the sun and produce chlorophyll for their food while releasing oxygen for us to breathe. Their purpose involves keeping us alive by providing both food and oxygen. We, in turn, inspire oxygen and expire carbon dioxide, which the plant absorbs to make its food. Therefore, we need their purpose and they need ours. It should also be noted that God created nothing for beauty, even though the things he created are beautiful. Beauty is a byproduct of design not a creature's intended purpose. Thus, if God designed the hairs on a bee's leg to transfer pollen from one flower to another and placed the hairs in your nostrils and the wax in your ears for a specific purpose, then you must know that he has a purpose for your life. 
Principle number three, not every purpose is known. Our world is plagued by the desire to have more and more and more, but having something is not really the most important thing. Knowing the reason for what you have is much more important. There are times, however, when the why is not known. This doesn't mean that the thing, event, or person doesn't have a purpose. Its purpose just isn't known. The story of a man named Jonah shows that shows what can happen when purpose is unknown. The book of Jonah describes the adventures of a prophet who didn't want to obey God's command. When God told him to go to the Assyrian capital of Nineveh and preach against their wickedness, Jonah disobeyed. He tried to run away from God by boarding a ship that was sailing in the opposite direction. While they were at sea, a violent storm nearly broke the ship apart. The terrified sailors cried for help and threw the cargo overboard to lessen the danger. Meanwhile, Jonah was sleeping in the hold of the ship. When the captain found him, he awakened Jonah and told him to pray to his God. The storm continued to rage until the sailors finally decided to draw lots to see who was to blame for the danger. The lot fell on Jonah, who then answered their questions, saying, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Jonah 1 9. Then he described how he was running away from God and told them to throw him into the sea. Because the sailors were reluctant to follow Jonah's suggestion, they tried to row to shore. But the storm became worse. Finally, they threw Jonah overboard and the sea became calm. The sailor's problem was not the storm, but the unknown purpose of the storm. Had they known earlier that the storm was God's means of talking to Jonah, they wouldn't have wasted so much time trying to save themselves. Their lack of knowledge didn't cancel the storm's purpose. It just meant they didn't have the same information Jonah had. They didn't know the storm's purpose. Unknown purpose always wastes time and gives the possibility of danger. Principle number four, wherever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. One day, I was washing my car with an old bath towel when my daughter came to me and said, Dad, what are you doing? I'm washing my car, I said, to which she replied, No, you're using the towel. That's to bathe with. Because she obviously was right, I had to come up with something smart as a response, so I said, Yes, this towel is designed to bathe with, but we've bathed with it enough. Now it's time for the car to get bathed with it. Although my daughter accepted my explanation, her concept was good. I was abusing that towel. I wasn't using it for its intended purpose. Abuse occurs whenever we don't use something according to its creator's intentions. In other words, if you don't know the purpose for something, or you choose to ignore that purpose, you can't do anything other than abuse it. No matter how good your intentions may be, they are canceled by your ignorance. You may be sincere and committed to your husband, your child, or your boss, but your sincerity and commitment cannot make up for your lack of knowledge of their purpose. Abuse remains inevitable and you put them in danger. Thus, when we run into problems with certain aspects of God's creation, the plant or the animal or the person is not causing the difficulty. It's our use or abuse of that plant, animal, or person that gets us into a predicament. The word abuse means abnormal use, or to say it another way, if you don't know the proper use for something, you will use it in an erratic and disorderly manner. 
unknown purpose also leads to misuse, which is a stronger form of abuse. To misuse something means that you miss the intended use. Although the product has a purpose, you miss knowing it and, then, and thus use it for something other than what the creator had in mind when he or she designed and made it. If you don't know the purpose for a baby, you will misuse the child. We call that child abuse. If you don't know the purpose for money, you will abuse the money. If you don't know the purpose of a job, you'll misuse the job. If you don't know the purpose for your mate, you'll abuse your spouse. We call that wife abuse or husband abuse. It is therefore very important that you either discover the purpose for everything you encounter in life or refrain from using that person or thing until you gain that knowledge. If, for example, your friend asks you to marry him, but he doesn't know the purpose of marriage, you would be wise to refuse to marry him until he discovers the God-given purpose for a marriage. Otherwise, he will abuse both marriage and, as a result, you. Many of us have been victims because others have abused the very things that God himself created. That's why it is very important that we not move into marriage, school, a new job, and so forth until we know God's purpose for giving us that relationship or position. It is the violation of this principle that is the cause for all our social problems today. The drug problem is not a substance problem, but a substance abuse problem. We abuse the godly gift of sex and experience the fatal consequences because we don't seek the purpose for these things. The New Testament tells the story of a man named Simon who lived in Samaria. Simon was a magician who claimed to have great powers. When Peter and John came to Samaria and preached the gospel, he believed their message and was baptized. He remained envious, however, of Peter and John, who were performing many miracles. When he saw them lay hands on believers so they could receive the Holy Spirit, he offered them money to give him the same powers. Peter rightly rebuked him for trying to buy God's gifts. Acts 8, 9 through 25. Simon's wrong was not that he wanted to share in the ministry of laying on of hands, but that he wanted the gift for the wrong motive. The scriptures are clear that God's gifts are given for the good of the whole body. 1 Corinthians 10, 24 and chapter 12, verse 7. Simon sought to abuse God's gift by using them selfishly. All abuse is a violation of purpose. Principle number five. If you want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing. Have you ever asked a microphone or a chair or a plant why it exists? Of course not, because those things can't possibly tell you what you want to know. The same is true of all things, whether or not they can talk. A created thing can never know what was in the mind of the creator when he planned and built it. A, a created thing can never know what was in the mind of the creator when he planned and built it. As ridiculous as the thought of asking a piano or a stereo why it exists may be, we've been doing that to each other for years. Hey, what's happening? Why are you here? Although your friend may respond to your question, it's probably not the right answer because you asked him the wrong question. Asking a friend why you or he exists is like the blind leading the blind. Most men and women don't know why they are here. You will never find your purpose as long as you ask a creature who you are because a person or thing apart from its creator cannot know its purpose. You may even come up with a purpose that isn't God's purpose and think that you are finally on the right track. The futility of understanding God's purposes 
apart from him is graphically portrayed in the encounter between God and Job in the latter part of the book of Job. Job was a faithful worshiper of God who lost everything when God agreed that Satan could test his faithfulness. Job's friends incessantly speculated, lectured, blamed, and argued, trying to decide why Job was experiencing such misfortune. When Job and his friends had ceased talking, God spoke to Job out of a storm. Again and again he questioned Job's understanding of things. He could not know because they required knowledge of God's purposes in creation. Who are you to question my wisdom with your ignorant, empty words? Now stand up straight and answer the questions I ask you. Were you there when I made the world? If you know so much, tell me about it. What holds up the pillars that support the earth? Have you any idea how big the world is? Answer me if you know. Do you know where the light comes from or what the source of darkness is? Do you know the laws that govern the skies and can you make them apply to the earth? Who is wise enough to count the clouds and tilt them over to pour out the rain? Job, you challenged Almighty God. Will you give up now or will you answer? Job chapter 38 verse 2 through 4, chapter 6, chapter 18 through 19, 33, 37, chapters 40 verses 1 through 2. Once again, that's Job chapter 38 verses 2 through 4, verse 6, verse 18 through 19, verse 33, verse 37, and chapter 40, verses 1 through 2. Obviously, Job could not answer because only God could tell him how the world was created to operate and why it was made that way. The rain could not, neither could the light or the darkness. Finally, Job admitted defeat. He would never know the reasons behind his experiences unless God explained them to him. Because creatures can never know purpose apart from the Creator. Principle number six, purpose is only found in the mind of the Creator. I was in an Oriental antique store one day that had beautiful furniture and trinkets. As I walked into the store, I picked up four or five bowls of different sizes and shapes. I thought, these are nice dishes to eat from. So I took them to the attendant and said, how much are these bowls? The attendant, who was Korean, replied adamantly, these, these aren't bowls. Oh, I'm sorry, I said. What are they? These are ceremonial dishes for a Korean wedding, he replied. Excuse me, I said, and replaced the dishes. Then I picked up some sort of thing that flapped and made noise that sounded like music to me and said, this is a good musical instrument. How much is it? Again, the attendant replied, that's not a musical instrument. This is used for incense when you go to the temple. Again, I said, excuse me, and continued my search. After I had missed four or five times, I asked him to go with me as I walked through the shop. As we looked at the many interesting items on display, I constantly asked him, what's this? What's that? How is this used? The attendant, who had grown up in Korea, knew the purpose for everything that I asked about. What looked like a stool, for example, was really a chest of drawers. Indeed, it would have broken had I sat on it. Because he was part of the culture, the clerk knew the purpose for everything in the whole store. He did not need to guess at the purpose of each item like I had done. I was wrong 80% of the time because he knew from experience how each piece was to be used. Had I simply bought the objects I liked without asking what they were and how they were to be used, I would have ruined some beautiful pieces. Since I didn't know their purpose, abuse was inevitable no matter how sincere I was. My friends and my family would have misused them as well because they wouldn't have been a any more knowledgeable concerning the purpose of the item than I was. 
just because we all would have used them the same way wouldn't have made our use right. In ignorance, we all would have abused them. The same principle is true for any product. If you want to know the purpose of a product, you must ask the manufacturer or authorized representative. The product itself cannot tell you. That's why most manufacturers put a label somewhere on their products or they give you similar information in an owner's manual. They want to teach you about the product and give you the opportunity to contact them if you have any questions about its purpose, use, operation, or maintenance. They know they must give you this information if the product is going to fulfill the purpose for which they made it. This principle of asking the creator for the purpose of a thing is also evident in the story of a blind man healed by Jesus. Jesus and his disciples were walking along when they saw a man who had been blind from birth. Jesus' disciples immediately wanted to know why the man had been born blind. Because their tradition said such things were the result of sin, they wanted to know if the man or his parents had sinned. Jesus went straight to the root of the matter. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. John chapter 9 verse 3. After Jesus had healed him, the blind man was questioned by everyone he met, including the Jewish authorities. What happened to you? Aren't you the blind man who used to beg by the gate? Where's this man who healed you? Don't you know he's a sinner? The man didn't attempt to explain why he had been healed. He simply told them what he knew. If the Jewish officials and everyone else wanted to know why he had been healed, they would, have, they would have to ask Jesus, like his disciples had, because only the originator of an action knows the purpose behind it. Therefore, if you want to know the purpose of a thing, including yourself, you must discover who created it and submit to his or her knowledge. Only God knows the purpose for your life. Principle number seven, purpose is the key to fulfillment. Manufacturers always want the consumer to be satisfied with their product. Labels and instruction books are their way of telling you what they had in mind when they created the product so you can compare that to your expectations when you bought it. If the purpose of the manufacturer and the expectations of the purchaser don't match, the product can't possibly satisfy both the consumer's desires and the manufacturer's objectives. Purpose dictates performance, which influences satisfaction. Thus, purpose is the key to fulfillment. Likewise, your purpose is the key to your life. It tells you what you are supposed to do and why. It reveals the reasons behind life's experiences and demands and supplies a vision for the future. It also provides a perspective that gives life significance and meaning. Apart from purpose, life seems fatalistic and haphazard and the events of life become more important than the reasons behind them. In essence, you will never experience true fulfillment and peace until you are executing the purpose for which you were born. Just like a trumpet's purpose is fulfilled when it is blown, a piano when it is skillfully played, a car when it is safely driven, and a seed when it becomes a tree, even so, your fulfillment is dependent on your discovering and fulfilling your purpose. Naaman was a Syrian who had to learn the significance of purpose. One day, his wife's servant girl told her mistress that a prophet in Samaria could heal her master of the dreaded disease of leprosy. Believing the girl's words, Naaman went to Israel. When the king of Israel sent Naaman to the prophet Elisha, Elisha told his servant to tell Naaman to dip seven times in the Jordan River and he would be healed. But Naaman became very angry and complained that he could have washed in, the, in rivers in Syria if that would have cured him. Finally, Naaman's servants convinced him 
to do what the prophet had instructed. Seven times Naaman dipped himself in the Jordan River, and when he came up the seventh time, he was completely cured. Second Kings chapter 5. Too often we look at life the same way Naaman did. We seek satisfaction in life's activities without considering the purpose behind them. It wasn't the river that healed Naaman, but his obedience to God's purpose through the words of the prophet Elisha. The river was powerless. God's word is all powerful. When he determines a purpose for our lives, we will find fulfillment only when we are walking toward the end he has set. God wants us to know his plans and purposes for our lives because he knows that apart from them, we cannot know hope, peace, and joy. In all things, purpose is the key to fulfillment because it establishes the foundation on which all life must be built. Principles. God does everything with and for a purpose. Everything serves a purpose. Unknown purpose always wastes time and gives the possibility of danger. Abuse and misuse occur when purpose isn't known. A person or thing apart from its creator cannot know its purpose. If you want to know the purpose of a product, you must ask the, the manufacturer or authorized representative. Purpose reveals the reasons behind life's experiences and demands, supplies a vision for the future, and gives life significance and meaning. Topics and questions for discussion. When you keep your head and heart going in the right direction, you won't have to worry about your feet. Are you worried more about where your feet are taking you or have you turned over your head and heart to your creator for his direction and purpose? What steps can you take to keep heading in a godly direction? Have you been the victim of abuse because someone did not know your purpose as a child of God? Were you taken advantage of in your marriage, at school, or in a job, or in a friendship? How did you handle the abuse? Have you forgiven the person? Have you been abusing yourself because you are unaware of your life's purpose? Give several examples of this abuse or give several examples of how your purpose is being fulfilled. Because purpose dictates performance, which influences satisfaction, purpose is the key to fulfillment. Write two or three paragraphs of personal experiences that confirm this statement about purpose, performance, satisfaction, and fulfillment. Like Naaman, are you sometimes guilty of ignoring God's prophets who bring you his instructions or of thinking the answer to your problem is too silly to accept? Are you open to God's new ideas and possibilities concerning every aspect of your life? This is the end of chapter 3. We will be picking up with chapter 4, The Priority of Purpose, on next week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you have a very blessed and wonderful day. As always, God bless. Bye.